In today's video, I'm going to show you this haul of 50 cent back issues that I was able to get for the amazing low price of 33 cents a piece on a recent trip to a local shop called Comic Book College. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. Today's haul comes from a local shop here in Minneapolis. The store is called Comic Book College. I want to say that they're the oldest store in the state, but I'm not 100% sure of that. I can tell you that they've moved locations a few times over the years, and unfortunately the location they're in right now is not really convenient for me, so I'm not able to get there as frequently as I'd like, but I do still try to get over there periodically uh, to hunt particularly in their discount bins. I will say that as far as local stores go, they have one of the best um, back issue inventories of any store around. Such a deep inventory of uh, and catalog of books. And that goes everywhere from wall books to your kind of main stock of inventory of back issues and then discount books as well. Uh, I primarily focus on the discount books and they've got a good selection there too. Everything is alphabetized and they have it broken up by price. So they'll have a a section, for example, that's all $3 books, and then there's $2 books, and then dollar books, and then the cheapest is the 50 cent books. Uh, on top of those already great discounted prices, they have additional deals when you buy quantities. So for example, in the dollar books, I know that if you buy 15, you get those for $10. So you get like 33% off. And I think they have something similar for at least the $2 books. As far as these 50 cent books go, the deal is great because uh, 50 cents a piece is already a great deal, but they'll also do three for a dollar, which makes them just 33 cents a piece. So that's kind of the, the theme I went with on this particular day of hunting. All the books you'll see here were from those 50 cent boxes or three for a dollar. And I've got a good variety of things, some runs that I've been working on, some new runs that I just started and I was able to get a jump start on. And then I even found a few books that are uh, kind of ones I've been hunting for for a while. They're not necessarily keys, but they're significant to me because they helped me to complete some things I've been working on. And there was one minor key that I was able to score as well for just 33 cents. So uh, I'm going to show you all that good stuff today. I'll put a link to the Comic Book College website and such uh, down in the description uh, of the video in case you're in the area you want to check them out. But for now, let's go ahead and see what I brought home on this day of hunting. Kicking things off is this book called The Solution, number one. I had never heard of it. Uh, I'm only vaguely familiar with the Ultraverse to begin with. It's uh, done by Malibu Comics, and I have looked this title up since I brought it home. It was a series that ran like 17 or 18 issues. The team you see there on the cover is a team of mercenaries, and that's about all I know. At the time, though, I just stumbled across this book. It looked really cool, and so I figured, why not for the price? I'll go ahead and pick it up. So this was pretty strictly a cover buy. The art on the cover is uh, done by whom? There's the signature down there. Let's see if it gives us credits anywhere handily here. It's a problem, there you go. Penciler Derek Robertson and doesn't specifically call out the cover, but I would guess that's him. DWR is probably the, uh, the interior artist as well, but I like the cover and it kind of gives me a Jim Lee kind of a vibe, though it's not Jim Lee. So just a, just a cover by to kick things off for today's haul. Next up, this was not just a cover buy. This is a volume of She-Hulk. I want to say this is volume two, if I remember correctly. The volume numbers for She-Hulk get a little confusing because her titles have changed. She went from Savage She-Hulk back in the Bronze Age, and then we had the famous you know, era that John Byrne kicked off. That volume was Sensational She-Hulk, and then she's had a couple, I guess, adjectiveless She-Hulk titles. So it, it gets a little confusing, but like I said, I think this is She-Hulk Volume 2. This volume started off being written by Dan Slott, 
and he did the volume one of She-Hulk as well. But then in issue 22, it changed at least writers and was picked up by Peter David and he carried it through the rest of that volume. Um, both of those writers have gotten omnibus treatments of their time on She-Hulk and it may be something I'll eventually decide to add to my collection but for now I'm trying to put this together through single issues and I only got started on this volume uh, a few months ago primarily because I stumbled across a handful of issues from this volume at a quarter sale and because I was able to find several issues in succession or kind of you know in, in close proximity in this run for so cheap that was kind of my jumping on point my jump start to this volume and now i'm continuing to work on it as i find issues and i've made some additional progress uh, on this day of hunting just found this one issue number 24. also found this uh book savage she hulks number three tie into the fall of the hulks storyline i am not familiar with the story on this this was another cover buy and I got this because a while back I came across, I want to say it was issue two of this volume, and it was a J. Scott Campbell cover of She-Hulk, and I think it's even a connecting cover, uh, you know, going from left to right, one, two, three. And because I like the cover art, I figured why not hunt for the other two remaining issues that were also done by Campbell. And it's been a long time since I got that first issue, but now finally I found one more issue from that three-part limited series. So happy to, to have two thirds of it down. Now just one more to go. And with this issue, really we're kind of kicking off, you know, five or so books here that I was really happy to find. Because like I said in the intro, it either helped me to progress significantly on a run, or actually in the rest of these cases, it allowed me to complete uh, some various runs that I've been working on. So the next one in kind of that theme there, this is Eternals number two of what turned out to be a seven part limited series. I started collecting this because of the John Romita Jr. art. It's also written by Neil Gaiman. And with this issue, I've now completed the entire limited series. So looking forward to finally being able to read that entire run. Here's another issue that uh, signified my completion of a limited series. This is Exiles number six. This is from Exiles volume two, kind of a uh, multiversal team that, uh, well, comprised of individuals from different realities, but then they also go on multiversal adventures and are protecting the multiverse, I think. So uh, I had found issue one of this earlier this year, I think, in a 50 cent bin. And I just like the cover art and the interior art. I also like this uh, cast of characters. So I figured I'll go ahead and hunt for the rest of those. Since then, I had been able to piece together issues two through five. And now finally, I have issue six to round out this short volume. So happy to complete that one as well. Here's a, a one and done volume. This is Cyclops number one. It's just a one shot. I don't remember if this is considered Cyclops Volume 1 or Volume 2, but I only discovered this because I was collecting the most recent limited series featuring Cyclops. It was a 12-part series that featured the teenage Cyclops as he went kind of on some space adventures with his dad, Corsair, the leader of the Starjammers. And as I was adding that to my CLZ app, I noticed there were some other you know, limited series or one shots focused on Cyclops. And I had never seen this one before, but I really like the cover. It's done by Roger Cruz. You can see his name down there. And I was just really happy to stumble across it. I think I had only recently added this to my wish list, and then I and I don't recall ever seeing it before then. Uh, but then short time after adding it to my wish list, boom, there it is. So happy to add that. I will say that the condition is not the best, which is somewhat to be expected, bagless, boardless, and only 33 cents, but it's got quite a few spine ticks along this edge here, and then you can see up in the top right, it does have a pretty good crease. So that is likely one that if I ever come across this again in that dollar bin type of a price range, I will probably get the upgrade and replace it, just because I 
I think the cover art is great and I would like it to present better without those creases and things. But for now at least, I'm super happy to have found this to begin with. Such a cool piece of art featuring Cyclops. Here's that minor key that I mentioned as well. This is Avengers number 12. And I think this comes from volume four of the Avengers uh, that started in like 2010. I started working on part of this volume once again because of the John Robita Jr. art, which ran over the course of the first like less than 20 issues, I think. And this was the final issue that I needed. I could swear that I had seen this in dollar bins, you know, years ago before I started collecting this run. But ever since the movie Infinity War, at least to some extent, we're pulling it out of the dollar bins because of Tony Stark getting the Infinity Gauntlet here. And so I have not seen it in dollar bins at all since that movie came out. And finally to stumble across it in a 50 cent bin, super happy and excited to finally score this issue. You'll notice on this one as well, perhaps that there is some damage and that's why it went into the 50 cent bin. You got this kind of color rubbing mark up here and then another one over here on the right edge. It does have a couple spine ticks, so it's not in the best condition, but unlike that Cyclops, um, I'm gonna be very happy just to have this one as it is. If I find a copy for a dollar, sure, maybe I'll get an upgrade, but I don't expect to really find this one in a dollar bin again anytime soon. So I'll be happy with it like it is because I didn't get it primarily because it's a key. I got it because I wanted to complete the run uh, that Brian Michael Bendis and John Romita Jr. did on the Avengers. So happy to, to add it to my collection. And like I said, another uh, example of an issue I found and, and it allowed me to complete that run that I was working on. So very happy with those last few issues there. The next two issues I got for two reasons. First of all, because I wanted them for the runs I'm working on. Issue 291 here is right towards the tail end of John Byrne's era on Fantastic Four. And so I'm trying to build that out. And then on the right, you've got issue 296, which is another one of the Marvel 25th anniversary covers. And anytime I find those for cheap and in good condition, I'm gonna pick those up. But the second reason I got them is actually because of a, a little desire to maybe do an experiment. You'll notice that both of them have, unfortunately, these price stickers stuck right on the cover of the book. And in the past, I've bought plenty of books from uh, stores like Half Price Books, and they'll have their clearance sticker uh, applied right to the cover of the comic book. And I've tried with varying degrees of success to remove those stickers, usually with a combination of a hair dryer and a pair of tweezers and things like that. But recently I've been kind of dabbling and reading about and watching videos about cleaning comic books, pressing comic books. And while I'm not ready to start pressing comics, I would like to try my hand at cleaning up some of the books that I find in these discount bins. And I've read about some different techniques for removing price stickers. And so I figured at 33 cents a piece, it's a pretty low risk gamble to buy them and try to get those stickers off. If I'm successful, then great. I will have removed the stickers. There won't be any residue left over and I'll have scored these two books nice and cheap. Uh, on, the on the other hand, if it doesn't go well, then, well, I only spent 33 cents on it and I can always hunt for upgrades in the future. So those are the reasons why I picked those up. If any of you have had success in removing price stickers from your books and wanna share in the comments below how you've done that, uh, then we'd all you know benefit from that. So feel free to share those things. Couple more Fantastic Four books to share with you. This jumps forward to volume three of Fantastic Four. It's a pretty big volume to begin with. And you can see they, by issue 48 and 49, they're already starting to hint at going back to the legacy numberings and it continued well into the 500s. I don't even remember offhand where volume three ended. I'll say that at this point, I'm not trying to get the entire volume. Uh, I could easily see 
you know, making that my goal at some point. For now, I'm kind of working on the lower end issues um, to add to my collection, just when I can find them in good condition and inexpensive. Uh, I'm not in any particular hurry. They're just fun things to continue to hunt for and, and build out over time as I go here. All right, I got one more kind of theme of books to show you. There's four different titles I'm going to show you and some issues from each one. They all come from this publisher called CrossGen. Uh, these books go back to, was this the 90s? Early 2000s, maybe it looks like. But it was done by CrossGen, or CGE there. And I think they were eventually purchased by Marvel. Um but I, I'm not 100% sure of that. But the, the reason I stumbled across them, or started paying attention to them, I should say, is I was watching a, a YouTube channel called Near Mint Condition. The host there goes by Uncanny Omar, and uh, he really does a great job of reviewing and giving heads-up notices of you know solicitations of omnibus editions and other oversized hardcovers and things. Um, and I, I enjoy watching those solicitations to see what's coming out because I've enjoyed starting to, you know, build my own collection of omnibus and oversized hardcovers. But even if it's a, a solicitation I'm not looking forward to getting as a collected edition, uh, I sometimes use those solicitations to grow my wish list and give me something new to hunt for. So in this case, he was talking about an omnibus that's coming out next year. The first title is this Sigil, and it's a collected edition featuring the entire first volume, which I think is like 40 some odd issues. And just his his advance notice of that, the kind of the summary of the story and looking at the art uh, got me interested. And though it doesn't make me want to go get the omnibus, because that's a really big price tag and a commitment to buy something that I'm really not sure I'll like even or not. But I was interested enough to say, hey, why don't I look at the table of contents add those uh, issues to my wish list, and then I'll see if I can hunt for them in the dollar bins. And so that's what I've been doing with this title sigil. And then you'll see there's a few others as well. There were four titles that rounded out that first wave of books from CrossGen. And I was able to make some progress on all four of those today. So uh, with all of that lead up now done, here's sigil 34, 35, 37, 39, 40, and 41. And this is, I think the genre here, it's like a, like a military sci-fi, uh, space sci-fi type of a, of a theme going on there. So that was the first one that he talked about. But then I also added to my wish list, and I'm starting to work on this title here called Meridian, there's issue 33, 35, 36, 38, and 42. Next up, we've got this title called Scion, issue number 40 and 42. And I th think this is the title. Jim Chung did some of the, or I should say a lot of the interior pencils on one of these titles. I think it was Scion, uh, though none of the issues that I found today were ones that he penciled, but I like his art style. And so I'm looking forward to adding those to my collection as well as I can find them. And then the fourth title is called Mystic. There's issue 33 and 40. So really kind of a hodgepodge of issues and titles there you can see most of them came from the 30s and 40s as far as issue numbers go in each series so not any point where i can start reading them yet but the price was right at 33 cents a piece and that's a really nice jump start for each of these titles and now i'll continue to hunt for those four different titles at least to to build those out and and see how i like those i know that cross gen did some other titles as well that came out later, but um, I'm limiting myself to these first four for now at least, and then we'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, just a just a fun new thing to add to my wish list and to be hunting for in the dollar bins, because after all, the hunt is at least half the fun 
of trying to track these things down and find them. And it's, it's so fun when you do stumble across them and you can get them in good condition for a great price. All right, that's going to do it for me. And that's going to wrap up this back issue haul from Comic Book College. I do hope you saw something that you liked, but how's things going for you? Finding anything good in the dollar bins of late? Maybe there's a series you've recently completed, or maybe it's a key that you finally scored after hunting for it for a long time. Let us know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.